Hey, how are you? Come on, you can do better than that. Whoa. I'm Mark Palchik, and I love DC. Except, you know, it's getting so expensive, right? I mean, you have no idea what it costs these days to buy a politician. <laughs> and they're just not worth it. DC has a politician that tweeted the Jews control the weather. Come on. The Jews, really? We haven't been able to control the weather since we left Egypt the first time. And besides which, if we really had that superpower, we'd just keep Manhattan warm. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, I did not grow up here. I grew up in Akron, Ohio. There is nothing to do in Akron, Ohio. Except, of course, to go to evangelical churches, to be saved, and I went. Oh, yes, I did. I got to see the Reverend Rex Humbart preach at the cathedral tomorrow. And he was amazing. He was so charismatic. He was so powerful. He had the power to take away all of my sins. He had the power to take away all of my ills. He had the power to take all major credit cards. <laughs> but not American Express. And boy, howdy, I wanted that power. Oh, yes, I did. So I went to my career council and I said, Rabbi, <laughs> I want to be an evangelical preacher. And that's when I found out they don't let Jews do that. Right. <laughs> so growing up Jewish in the 60s, I learned to follow the golden rules. Golden rule number one, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Golden rule number two, he who has the gold is usually a Republican. Golden rule number three, never, ever put cheese whiz on your ham sandwich. <laughs> well, the, the truth is that once you cross the ham line. <laughs> Cheese don't make no difference. No, no. But my parents were actually very liberal. They let me date whoever I wanted in high school, just so long as she was Jewish. Which really wasn't a problem, because the non-Jewish girls wouldn't talk to me. All right, the Jewish girls wouldn't talk to me either. But truth is, I didn't really want to talk. It was really tough growing up a nerd in the 60s. I mean, dating was obviously out. There were no personal computers, so there were no video games. None. So I had to turn to sports. And I got really good at baseball card collecting. <laughs> and in high school, my sport was boxing. I was my high school's number one punching bag. In fact, thank you. In fact, I got jumped by a skinhead just so he could see my horns and tail. Mm. What an idiot. I got rid of those when I was circumcised. The worst thing, though, about growing up Jewish in the 60s was the religion. We had no Christmas trees, which means we got no presents. We had no Easter bunny, which means we got no candy. We had no foreskin, which means... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I've been with the same woman for 50 years. Yeah, she is a saint. I, on the other hand, am clueless. Before I started doing stand-up, I really thought that dating apps were short for dating appetizers. You know, the thing we had before dating dinners? I thought the tender was how people liked their meals. On the subway, I'm so old that pregnant women give me their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, my best pickup line, hell, I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> I also really believe that hooking up and having a meal, <laughs> oh, I found out the hard way when I asked my secretary if she wanted to hook up for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a good HR conversation. But I can be hip. For my wife's birthday, I went up to Adam and Eve and I got her a, a vibrator. She loves it. She uses that thing every single day. It's buzz, moan, buzz, moan. Finally, I couldn't take any longer. I burst into the bathroom. I said, babe, save some for me. She said, but Mark, it feels so good on my neck. <laughs> so unlike you young kids, I have no problem with getting older. I mean, I have no desire to be an actual ghost. It is bad enough being alive and being ghosted by my secretary. <laughs> what I do mind, though, is being disrespected because of my age. Like those 
those clubs down on, on, on U Street, you know the ones, the ones that have the signs that say rated P for pretentious, no one over the age of 60 admit without an influencer. What the fuck is an influencer? <laughs> and my boss, 20 years younger than me, she just doesn't get it. For example, I go in for my annual review. I tell her about all the clients I've brought in, all the money I've made for the firm, and all she can say is, so Mark, does this Instagram filter make me look like a change agent? Oh, and by the way, you're fired. We need your office for our new intern. Well, the joke's on her, because October 10th, at the Beer Baron, I'm going to be opening for the National Act of the Sklar Brothers. Ha <laughs> ha, joke is certainly on her. But I'll tell you, I still have them in my vigor. Oh, yes, I do. I'll have you know that I am younger than at least four of the 2020 candidates. And hopefully Bernie doesn't die, so that number doesn't change. <laughs> for 90-minute comedy walks every weekend. And I take my dog for a walk every day, twice a day. He said, you know what? That dog stops every 10 minutes so I can pee. <laughs> <laughs> what I also don't like, though, is flying. First of all, there is no personal space. You always got this plus-size guy sitting in the center seat, arms akindo, like a condor, smelling like a condor, or you got the guy that's putting his body bag up in the overhead aisle, all the while blocking the aisle, or my personal favorite, the guy with the 20-inch laptop watching Die Hard 2 with no headphones. So you can imagine my joy when my flight last week, the woman next to me was this wisp of a woman. She was so tiny, I actually had room for my elbows. She was able to store her carry-on underneath the seat in front of her. And her cell phone was so tiny. I'll tell you, I could barely see the new pictures of her girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing is you're at 30,000 feet and you got no control over your fate. So you know what I do? Whenever I get on the plane, the first thing I do is check out the plane's karma. If there are a bunch of young kids on the plane, I go, Karma's not going to let anything happen to these young kids. If priests get on the plane, mm, it could go either way. If the young kids get on with the priests, <laughs> I get off the plane. But I tell you, I wish I got off this plane last week. Oh, geez, from D.C. to Dallas, it was so turbulent. And then when I thought we were going to land after circling Dallas forever, the pilot comes on and says, Ladies and gentlemen, Dallas is still closed because of weather, and we're running low on fuel. So please, uh, we are going to have to make an emergency landing. So please, tray tables, seat backs up, store your belongings, and remove your eyewear. Remove my eyewear? Isn't that what they say right before they say bend over and kiss your ass goodbye? <laughs> and then it did get tough. Aunt Ruff, I am talking Tina Turner Ruff. So bad that my seatmate Alice grabbed my arm. And she goes, oh my, karma is getting even with me for having a glorious affair in D.C. And just as she said that, the plane goes up on one wing, nose down, <laughs> overheads pop, <laughs> oxygen deployed, and then, and then, straighten out. Ladies and gentlemen, Dallas is clear, landing in two minutes. Everybody cheered, except for Dallas. Oh my. When I thought we were going to die, I texted my husband, and I admitted my mortal sin. Oh, Alice, you are an idiot. Don't you know that what happens in D.C. wrecks the rest of the country? I do believe Alice is going to need a lawyer. Oh, come on, lawyers are not so bad. I mean, they could be very useful as sleep aids. And I also get it. People like calling lawyers about as much as they like calling undertakers. But if your grandma's died, you got to call the undertaker, right? And you really ought to call a lawyer if you're the one that killed grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I'm trying to say is that it's best if we use lawyers before we do stupid things. Because lawyers are a lot like condoms. It's best to use them before you get fucked. I'm Mark. <laughs> Thank you. <very> <laughs>